Hi, my name is Eric Torquia. I'm the executive partner for Technology Partners Limited. The goal of today's presentation is to show you how we can take a crystal ball model, which you may already have in your organization, or at risk, or any other tool for that matter, and why it makes sense to convert it into a SIP library that can then be put into a meta model. Those meta models can serve as shared decision-making models that can be used live in meeting settings or risk-based dashboards for assessing performance over time. Here we are in front of Oracle Crystal Ball, which is an add-in to run simulations in Microsoft Excel. Today, we are gonna convert this model into a model that can be shared in native Excel or across different types of systems and doing most of the heavy lifting and the modeling using either crystal ball or at risk. So what this model is, is a cost estimate with four line items of which each line item is a distribution. So in this case, we know that our project management will have a minimum of 12, a likeliest of 13 and a maximum of 15. Using these base statistics as a base case, the mean, the median, the standard deviation, etc., as well as the percentiles. We are going to hit OK and knowing that all of these are the same, so this one's between 5 and 15, this guy's between 14 and 25, etc. We are going to run a thousand trials of this model, extract them, and then build a model that can be shared. So we hit start and now we have a cost estimate we know that there is an 88.48 percent chance that our costs will be above what our theory is now what happens if we need to share this or interact with this information in a group well what we would do is we would go to the SIP modeler tools and hit the crystal ball extract so what it has done is that it has created a SIP library with all the metadata as well as the total cost and the various inputs as we would find in most other SIP library files. Now we are going to create a, a model from this. So to do so, we are going to initialize the model in the current workbook and we are going to hit OK. And then of course we need to create our model tab. And now we are going to introduce the crystal ball back in and reconstitute this model. So to do so, we have library inputs and we have our know that our inputs are going to start at E2. Our metadata, which is in fact our names, okay, and if we had given more space, we could add these other features, will be put in. And what we are interested in is taking the hardware, the miscellaneous, the project management, and the software so we can reconstitute our output. So we hit OK, and here we go. Of course, since we are not in the business of uh, ugly spreadsheets, we are going to get rid of the lines here. We are going to increase our model just to make it easier to, to assess. And now what we have here are our four distributions, just like we had in our previous model. And if we were to do the sum of this, so we would hit sum, take this range, and hit OK, and then apply an output. So SIP modeler, and then generate, define an output. The output name, which we'll probably start with here, so total cost. So we'll create the output. And the output name is over here. And we hit OK, and now this too will appear as a distribution. And of course, we have another function where we're going to do an adjusted version of this model where maybe there are some changes we would like to make. 
So we will put in percent. And then here, each of these will be a hundred percent. And then using the sum, the sum product function, we will have total revised cost. And we will put all of that over here. So the revised cost is here, and it is equal to sum product, which is a very novel formula, which will take this range, and it will multiply it by this range. And if you'll notice, if I were to say my hardware is going to cost me 200%, it will revise my cost. So let's for put this back here. We are going to make this pretty so we can understand. So like so, like so, and a nice control B, and why not? There we go. So the meta information that we would be interested in, and here, in fact, this will be more practical over here in our total revised cost over here. And we are going to convert that equally into an output. So to do so, again, we go to the, and we define an output, and the name is above. And we hit OK. And now we have that. And if we're interested, we can put in the mean, we can put in the P50 for the median, the P80, P90, and how about the P95? Now, another way of doing it would be to convert these directly into percentages. So we only create the formula once. So that's 90, and then 95. And what we have here is equal average this, and that's it. And now we convert this into a statistic. And now that we know the mean is 68 here, is $68. And then if we want the percentile, we take the percentile of this number, which we are going to freeze, use the F4 function, and of course, the percentile over here. We are going to copy this, and then we are going to convert all of these into statistics. And we are going to do exactly the same thing over here. So we are going to take the average of this guy, and then we are going to take equal percentile. Now the reason I use the old percentile function is because if I did not, and I shared the model with someone who had an older version of Excel, it would not work so well. So we are going to take the percentile of this number, F4, comma, and we are going to copy this downwards. And we are going to also get stats. Now here's the difference. If I were to ch discuss in my meeting with my executive management, what were the what were the options? I would be here at 200%. That changes all my statistics. What would happen if my project management were 90%? And oh, my software licensing, well, that ended up being 130%. We have basically seen against the baseline what would be the changes between the total cost and the total revised cost. This is what we refer to as an interactive model that can serve to share insight within the context of a group meeting. These can also be defined to set up performance metrics and then we could look at where our number fell in as a percentile to the final outcome and see if we're actually doing very well or not.